So I had a bit of a goof with uh, the slides in which get which branch I actually posted them to, uh, pushed them to. Uh, so if you were looking for them and didn't find them, that's why. I I did also post them to the meeting materials. I'm sure we'll revise it and I'll post a new one. But um, I, I think it's a priority to walk through the slides. Our meeting is Tuesday, right? Uh, and... Uh, it's at 1030. So we're can I've, I sent out a message to cancel this meeting for 10 o'clock next week because it makes no sense for us to meet for half an hour unless there's someone has some rig reason we should do that. I think one. Mark, do you want to let us know where you're from? What your what brings you here today? Since you're new, introduce yourself to the group. Group could introduce themselves. Who is call-in user two, by the way? Am I muted? No, I'm not muted. Hi. Um, so my name is uh, Mark Boschke, and I am with Juniper Networks. Hank yeah. probably already knows me from PCG, um, and I work with Guy Dorco. Call in user two. Who's dialed in? Peter, are you dialed in? I don't see a mic next to your, uh, your name. Uh, maybe it is me, but I I I called in. Um, but I called in like I did last time through the uh, WebEx Act, and it uh, but you didn't, associated you, with me. You didn't use your. Oh, it didn't it? Okay. Like you didn't, it usually asks you for a user number or something. And I did, I, I, I did, I gave the user number you gave me. And it didn't associate it. Oh, well, anyway, just good to know who's doing what call. Yep. I can rename you. I used to be able to do that as the, if it was possible, you could rename it. I'm actually well, this is Hi, Mark, by the way, and uh, Ned is not here, yes? Uh, he is still he's missing? not here. No, he's still missing. Um, so I think we should probably start without him. And we have Dave Thaler. I've already got two comments on your first slide. Awesome. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, 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 Peter's uh, name is misspelled. Whose name? Peter. Peter. Oh yeah, L O S C O C C O. And the second one, I think uh, there was a change in the uh, star author list since last time. I think you get to highlight that fact that uh, William is now listed as a co-author where he wasn't before. Yeah, I will do that. Okay, I was going to do that verbally. Uh, hang on a second. I have the wrong revision of the. I, I'm sure we will switch to the editable version. I have the PDF because I wanted to <laughs> make sure that it looked sane. C O C C O. Uh, and you want me to add. Maybe one suggestion would be um, after William's name, we have the asterisk. If you put uh, the word new after the asterisk and before the end parenthesis. I'll just switch to the application. So you want me to do? Yep, that looks good. Okay. Uh, all right. So I, I'm, I, I, I have some doubts whether I have 14 meetings since ITF 106, but. I don't, don't care if that number is precise. <laughs> um, and 
Uh, I thought about highlighting how many more pull requests over last time, but whatever. The point is to give people notion that that we are in fact not sitting around doing nothing uh, for there. Uh, so uh, overview presentation, uh, stick something relevant here uh, in the right hand side. Uh, so that's basically what I'm I'm talking about doing. I wanted to bring up the table of contents. Um, I thought about sticking some of the issues that are on this slide. I thought about sticking them on top of this to see to say where they are. Um, but I, I don't know whether that's just too busy. Uh, I did notice that uh, while I was making this slide that the numbers changed yesterday. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> While I was making the slide, the number of pull requests and issues changed. <laughs> and I went, oh, well, that's good. So like number 75 showed up from you, Dave, uh, mm -hmm. yesterday. Um, and so I tucked it in there. And I think this, uh, there were some edits to the defined claim that happened as well. So I just stuck this there. Um, and I think the point was to my point to put the URLs all there was so that people at home would be able to click on them and <laughs> and uh, um, dive deeper into it and see if there's something that they really have something to say about. Um, it's entirely possible some of these will be crossed out by Monday, right? I, I, but we'll see. Um, that's really it, right? I mean, there are no pull requests uh, uh, there's number 60, which is a pull request without an issue, but, but everything else is attached to an issue somehow. Your, uh, font size on number 60 looks off. Yeah. Just squint to read it. Better. I'll probably, uh, just, I'll probably still just bump match, it. but, um, I'll probably just bump the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and you see two different conventions for what you list before a pull request. Uh, under number 69, you have the number 75 under it, and in number 18, you don't have a number under it. Okay. Uh, that was our slide from last time. Um, I mean, this was the slide that was presented the last intro meeting. Last intro meeting, yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, before you leave that, it looks like a couple of those are bolded. Are they supposed to be here on this page or in this page? Well, the page before the one that yeah. had the pull request. Yeah, they're all, supposed, yeah. they're all supposed to be bolded. Yeah, they are all supposed to be. Uh, the first, the first two uh, issue names are bolded, and the other ones are right. okay. Well, it's not quite bolded. It's got to be some font issue or something. Because now seventy one and seventy three look different. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll fix it. I I think that I they're okay. just slightly different sizes or something like that. I'll just apply something to it and. Okay. Uh, I I, I was trying to. Backwards. Yeah, I just I don't want to. I'll be happy to fix it. Uh, so that was previously open issues. Uh, we have an introduction, terminology discussion. Uh, last argument is about claim. Um. And I think the working group should get a kick at that can, unless we think it's we don't want to do that. We want to we're finished. Do you have a slide on the claim stuff, or is that not something that Grant spent time on in the meeting? Make a slide. I don't have a slide on it. Uh, you should at least mention verbally whether you have a slide on it or whether that's going to go to the list. So I don't know that you need a slide on it. The question is how much time do you have, and you have too many slides or not enough slides. So okay, well I'll put a slide at the end, and we can decide whether or not we want to have a slide on it okay so then i wanted to go in through walk through and basically wanted to walk through the diagrams that was my goal um maybe there's a diagram that's missing somewhere i would love to have throw an animation but i don't have that much clue or time um and so i wanted to to emphasize that these that these pieces are separate but are not subject to standardization maybe there's another way to do that mm -hmm. Um, I yeah, thought about right. putting, I thought about putting, uh, 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 what is the right word? I thought about doing this, but I thought that was 
that didn't work. Um, um, there's an error on the slide. Yeah. Um, endorsements may or may not come from the OEM. They come from some other entity, but that entity might be a manufacturer, an OEM, could be the end uh, device owner. Um, point is, it could be any of those. It's not actually uh, constrained. Okay, so yeah, I agree with you. Uh, endorsements come. You got, you got there before me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Exactly uh, so, so do you want me to list them, or do you want me to just not say anything? Um, I'm wondering if we can say who it doesn't come from. I don't know, it comes from an external entity or something. Um, I don't know, Mark. Do you have a suggestion? Um, it it basically comes from an authority, external authority. Okay, I like that word. Better than entity, yeah. Uh, endorsements come from OEM uh, owner. Um, e G OEM is fine because it's just an example. So yes, uh, I was going to yeah. do that. I just wanted to put a second example, and I wanted to put it okay. in a, a bullet. Um, um, and there we go. Oh, it didn't work. Uh -huh. So can I ask a question? Sure. Um, every, so everything above the green is not subject to IETF standardization at this time. Because it's not in scope for this working group. It, it, if there's some other working group that's going to do it, that's always possible, but that's not going um, to Sorry, your heart, the plan was always to stage the charter. It is not in scope this charter for now. Then is to do the attestation provisioning procedures afterwards. So this might become in scope in the next stage, or some of it at least. Sure. Okay, so not in charter for ITF rats working group, um, and uh, or not in current charter. If that would make you happier, yeah, that, that would be better. Yeah. Sure. Um, and. You need to fix your grammar still in the first one. Ex endorsements come from an external authority. Okay, thanks. Um, missed an E. I spoke with an E. Look, yeah, committee. Yeah, very, okay. Good. Um, I'll also note that on the next block of text, verifier needs a comma, uh, Oxford comma. <laughs> Thank you. It would be black to be consistent with the previous karma. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just waiting. I was just like, Sorry. you're going to complain about the green comma. I was thinking about how to fix it. You know, I would uh, oh, uh, near the top. I would delete the maybe signed bullet. Um, Okay. In other words, don't talk about that because all the stuff should be signed, right? I don't think we have to. I thought there was ways that endorsements would get to the verifier by uh, out of band security. We had a big argument about that at some point. Um, it, yes, but I don't think it's the right granularity on this slide to talk about that. Okay. I, I thought if I didn't say that, that someone was going to emphasize, want to emphasize that they have to be signed. But then and you'd I, get into the oh, but does the appraisal policy have to be signed? Oh, does yeah, it's us, it's us, it's us. Oh, not in scope. Should I put the word not in scope? No, not in current charter. Okay, that's that enough. Yeah, the point, the point is, the conversation is out of scope. We'll define it when we get there, right? Okay, so yeah. you have sure. an extra comma in the uh, EG parentheses, yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. well. You just have to move it sooner. Oh, no. Talk about oh, yeah. Conservation of commas. Conservation of commas. You want it removed from there? Is Although the European standard, it doesn't have the comma after the EG, so it doesn't matter. We're not writing a spec, people. I, I, I you're not yeah, writing I a spec. Anyway, you can, you can help me for that. So, uh, okay. So, and I, I had the, uh, um, did this lurk? that expand for you? No. Didn't work. Okay, just a second.
Oh, hi, Ned. Good to see you. Hey, how are you? All right. So my intention was to, uh, so conceptual data flow. So uh, that there's basically, I'm, I, it's in the PDF. There's two types of environments. Um, San Jose contains an testing environment, the target environment. Maybe someone would feel that I should say it the other way around, but maybe that's okay. And then some people ask, can the thing be trusted to measure itself? And our conclusion is, it doesn't always sense, but the verify knows when it does. Are you okay with that, that conversation? Because I think it reflects the conversation we had. Okay, layered attestation. Okay. On the, previous, on the previous uh, bullet, uh, verifier knows it does if the attester is, uh, tr uh, is trustworthy. It's a circular dependency. The verifier knows when the environment, the situation calls for the, the, the target environment to attest to itself. So maybe rather than saying that it's trusted, saying that it's not relevant to the uh, verification. So the verifier knows whether it cares or not. There's a. There's so a, I think I thought Ned's point, your point was that uh, it it knows if and only if the information is in the evidence. It, it, it can tell that it can tell that that's that the target environment and the testing environment are conflated. Uh, if and only if the attester is implemented in a trustworthy manner. And that's a you circular. Want me to fix, you want me that's, to fix and that is circular logic, which some would argue is not trustworthy. So I don't know. Okay, so I wish Lawrence was here because he has the canonical example of the app measuring itself. Um, and the Which app some of us never understood, but yeah. Well, but some of it, some of it is that the app uh, is measuring itself, but it actually it's been loaded by a trusted load boot path, which but that boot path can't be seen by that verifier, and I think that's the okay. part that he's missing to tell people, right? Is that yeah? So, but in in any case, you need to just lay it on the verifier that says the verifier is the entity that will decide whether it it matters or not. It's, right. So. It's it's responsible to know. It might not be able to know, but it's still responsible to know. All right. So, I, I mean, it, it can decide not to care um, and just use what it has as evidence, or it can say, no, that's a, a, a non-starter. I'm not going to um, verify this. Right. So my goal here is to just basically stop the stop the war <laughs> because we have some people that want, have this in their space, and there's some clearly some people where they're like, well, that makes no sense. And I and I get both points of view, and so I just want to capture that tussle here, right? That that there's a that we don't have to agree on this. We just have to know that we're not confused about the wrong. We're not applying the wrong policy. <clears throat> so the is, if, they, if they claim it doesn't make sense, then they can be a verifier that never allows it. But the architecture shouldn't include it. Should allow it. Yes. Um, so um, since it doesn't make sense according to many uh, uh, security interpretations or whatever, then I don't think the ar the architecture should go out of its way to allow it. I think the point is that uh, without changing the architecture, you can use the architecture to do it anyway. We have a sentence in there that actually is pretty close to this well, sometimes. That, that sentence right there is true because of the next slide, regardless, right? When the target environment A includes a testing environment B, that statement in the blue is true. Right? That's, that's where the right. next slide is. Ah, right. so that's maybe self where that sentence comes from. Okay. I, I like the way that the sentence is phrased right now because it's ambiguous and it's true both ways, right? Okay. Right. So, 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 so it's so a the, feature. The, 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 yes. The question of whether or not the, it can be trusted to measure itself, it, it's not the fact that it's measuring itself. There's always a place for the verifier to ask, 
can it trust the measurements, period, wherever the measurements were? Was it uh, something that happened during boot? Was it happened from some external entity that was measuring and watching from afar? And, and so whether it's, you know, where the measure is and is the measure trusted is a, is a meta question that the verifier always has to be aware of. And, and I think that's the point that we want to make more than it's, can we trust the measure itself? That's just a special case of can I trust a measure? Okay. And and so now, actually, this flow is makes sense for all environments. It's just it's that the verifier knows whether whether the thing that's a whether the testing environment is competent to to make those to, to state to provide that evidence. Right, and, and and if it matters, there may be a requirement for additional claims in the evidence. Yes, as evidenced in the next slide on layer on the layers. Yes, yeah. So then we get into layers. Okay. Um, so it's this red box and then this box and then this box and then this one, noting that we don't like term and we'd love for you to come us a better term. Which term do you like? UF, UE, UEFI, BIOS, and firmware. Well, here, since it's such as the, I think it's fine on this slide. I think if what we're on the fly, but in this text, we, we yeah. keep repeating that comma, yeah, yeah. comma, comma, yeah. and we're not yeah, happy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. With, with that. Uh, that's not what I want. Wait. Okay, so next one, I didn't come up with any bubbles for this one. Uh, I believe, I don't know if there's another major example. Uh, our two examples are line cards in a chassis, aggregate of similar systems where we had many routers working together as a single unit. Um, and I thought that was a good way to write this. Uh, smartphones uh, seem to be composite devices where the we the one CPU collects data about the state of the other pieces, whether they're broadband or Wi-Fi chips or something. And I don't know if we had a, th I couldn't find a third example of a composite well, I, device. I think, the sm I think the slide is mostly fine as is. The only thing that I would do is it's actually not obvious to a reader why smartphones is in the list. And so without your voiceover, it doesn't make sense. Uh, so in other words, why a smartphone on there, but not laptop, for example? You know, a peripheral is to a main board. So um, you could consider different kinds of uh, software environments. So, for instance, a a, uh, a measurement agent that was doing something from a, another virtual machine in a virtualized environment, or even in the smartphone case, something running in Trustone to look in out, outside of Trustone to do measurement. Mm -hmm. uh, those can be looked at as composite uh, attestations, you know, mm -hmm. layered attestations. Uh, those layered and composite are two different axes, so I don't want to combine those. So, the yeah. composite yeah. is showing a case where there is just multiple independent sets of evidence. None of them are, are attested by the same layer below. And the layer right. below, and yeah. we may actually have each each of the environments may actually be layered. Right. Devices attached to a system bus is an, another example. What? Say that again. Devices that are attached to a system bus. Each device has its own firmware. I realized a question that I would ask if I would see this for the first time, and I don't know if it's just early and I can't think right now, or if we actually discussed it before. If you have evidence of a composite device, what do you get back? Do you get back an attestation result of a composite device? Do you get back multiple attestation results, one per uh, piece of evidence that went into the evidence of composite device or what what do you get back here since there's a line going up but there's no line going out of the verifier to explain what happens in this case yeah i don't know i think it depends on the use case i think uh, it depends yeah, on the relying party we need to file an issue to track that yeah <clears throat> but I, I would argue that that should be subject for negotiation among the relying party and the verifier i think so too Right, that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. It, right, it's really a case of the verifier needing to know what it needs and who it's supporting uh, in a decision to for for whatever. So it's a scenario based thing that has been negotiated. Negotiated between what and what? The verifier and relying party. 
But assuming the verifier wants to know everything it can about the composite device, it, you know, it would get back something from a tester B, something from a tester C, and something from a tester A, plus some additional claims that show that this evidence uh, transited the composite device. So I think for for example for example Dave you couldn't you couldn't you you might not be able to say that uh, secure enclave on the on the on the main processor was actually secure if it turns out you have a bus device that can diddle on RAM which is not also secure. Uh, so the question that I'm asking is can a tester B a tester C dot 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 I don't know, maybe line currents yeah. in a chest or something like that. Can all of those uh, B, C, dot, dot, dot things have their own uh, network communication? By network communication, they have their own IP address and they're able to communicate with relying parties themselves. No, that was the point. That's why we have the composite device. They don't have their own, uh, we don't want them to. It is. They but don't I mean, have them or they Because don't. it yeah. says evidence network. of the testers via internal links or network connections. So there could be network connections that may not be internal, correct? We we well, well I, I can think that I mean, Eric 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 uh, was in favor of network connection. Mm -hmm. I, I think we hadn't really discussed but that, it. But that uh, there's one point about how the attester B communicates with the testing environment inside the lead attester A. There's yeah. a different point as to whether a tester B can also have a network connection that goes outside the composite device. So, for example, let's say that the uh, lead attester A is the uh, uh, main CPU in a server, and a tester mm -hmm. B is a specific NIC with a processor in it. Yep. And so then a tester B could do its own communication for, through some you know management link or whatever it is, independent of what the, uh, the management connection, sorry, um, independent of whatever the lead of tester A is doing, right? Because you can offload stuff, it may do stuff inside of its big processor there. If so, then a tester B may need its own passport to get back from the verifier, right? Right. Is that a separate? Right. Is that two separate attestations, or or is that still a composite device? Mm -hmm. I would think that the composite device there there needs to be some sort of bundling, and that the two uh, sets of evidence need to be combined into the one set of evidence to be considered composite. Okay. So I think oh, the answer uh, is that the assumption is that BC dot 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 do not have any network. The only communication between, say, a tester B and the verifier is via the lead of tester A, in which case uh, the only evidence that exists and the only communication of the verifier from the whole composite device comes through lead of tester A. I think that's what this diagram is trying to show. Yes, I think so, yeah. Dave. And and so yeah. so I think that the reason why we have internal links or network connections is. So if you consider a tester B to yes, to be some uh, big routing platform with 100 gig links, great. But the path to the verifier is through the management connector, which is on a, the lead of tester A, right? And so although it could do gigabits of data elsewhere um, and maybe is connected to a tester A via a 100 gig backplane, which is IP addressed, it's still not actually okay. externally visible we're, we're not trying to say that this is a special case of a of a topology uh model i think the main point is that a tester b itself can never talk to any relying party correct i think that's the main point and so that would be the answer so i don't think you have to modify the slide but it should be clear and if anybody asks we can say that that's the answer yeah fine thing okay we can go on where I'd really like an animation where the top where the <laughs> top data flow can can you know first mutate into the left one and then unfolds and then mutates into the right one. Okay, to show that the the paths go through each other but are not actually really uh severed. Um in the, uh, in the, I in think the spec we call these um topology models, not data flow models. Did we? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh, the title of, of section five. Is the top half of the slide is this copied directly out of the spec? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I was gonna make a comment that I think is okay as is that uh the slide would be easy to read if a test your verifier relying party went left or right rather than up and down. But uh the reason it doesn't do that in the document is because it doesn't fit in 80 columns that way. 
and I, I wanted to to basically yep. uh, I wanted to to match the I, I, I yep. can you say I put my I, I, boxes okay. on top of the ASCII text so that people would connect directly to it. There was no like, oh, did you change the diagram? Actually, I changed one diagram so that my boxes would line up better. Um, I didn't think that mattered. Like I changed it in the document. <laughs> um, but um, yeah. Sure. So we've talked a lot about this. I don't think we have a lot to say your, there. Your screen went away. Pardon me? Are people still seeing your screen? I'm no longer seeing your screen. Oh, I- Yeah, it was screwed for me too. I must have screwed that up somehow. Yeah, I also lost it, so. Sorry. There you go. Uh, okay, so then um, I again would love to have an animation where the top part turns into the bottom. Our, our this diagram, what do we call it? The bow tie diagram. Yeah, I'm wondering if you uh, want to add the same color coding thing. Well, you don't don't do that because it just misaligned the uh, the line the line immediately under the word verifier. It's now off by a space. Maybe it was before. Oh, there's a dot missing on the left end of the line underneath verifier on the bottom right yeah. diagram. Yeah, there is. Oh, actually, you know what? That's in the original diagram. I, I thought I fixed that actually in the in the in the original diagram. So what I, I was going to say is I know I've actually seen that problem in the original diagram. All right. All right. Uh, what I was going to say is, do you want to add the uh, green, blue, yellow encoding on the bottom right diagram? I could do that if you would like me to do that. that uh, I thought that might be too busy. Um, but uh, I, I can do that. Um, okay. Well, I don't know until I see it, so it might be too busy. I don't know. So, so, so I, I have a question about the, the one for, format. Uh -huh. Is that something that um, the RATS uh, group is going to insist on, that there, there be one format defined for all attestations? And if so, is, is that format? It means that in any particular message, there's only one. But but I, I think the thing that I would strive for is that uh, when you engage in this uh, attestation dance, that there needs to be an agreement beforehand what that format is, and that's what's important, not what the format is. Yeah. So I changed yeah. it instead of single to a specific format. I don't think you can guarantee, <clears throat> in a case of a composite device, that uh, there'll be one format. That might be true. Uh, right, so that's really, fine. You know, that's specific, which doesn't necessarily mean. Uh, it's still true in here because this is a tester A, B, and C, and it just so happens in the evidence of composite device, a tester A, B, and C's evidence are combined together. The the, the evidence for composite device is not in this diagram. So each individual evidence is specific, but the evidence of composite device, you're right, it may include uh, multiple evidences, each of which are in a different format. Right, and so I, I think the, the the key point that we would want to convey is that um, when you start this process, that there has been an agreement, whether it's negotiated or predefined or whatever, that specifies exactly what part uh, or what format each part of the attestation is going to be um, uh, in. It's more it's it can it's more complex than that because we've also had conversations around unsigned evidence formats versus signed evidence formats and the possibility. That <clears throat> you could. Yeah, but the, you the, could. That's, that's less important because you can get away from all that com complexity by talking about that that agreement. Whatever you've agreed to, whether it's negotiated or predefined, um, will specify which pieces are signed and by whom, and, and what what that needs to look like. And so both sides need to, you know, the producer of that evidence um, needs to make sure that all of the uh, cases are there uh, or, or all, all the formats are, are, are supportable and the verifier needs to be able to interpret them all. Um, uh, so that, you know, we, we've discussed in our work questions about should you engage in um, negotiations if you can't support all of the things that are necessary. And so, uh, you know, this pre-agreement aspect becomes very important to say we can do everything that, that's going to happen. Yep, I agree with all that. Um, I think what this diagram is uh, showing is what happens at the end of that, um, which is eventually you settle on a particular thing that you're going to send, right? After you've done pre-negotiation, after you've done the configuration, however it is that you learned it. Um, in many cases, the, uh, the, the device on the left that sends the evidence 
may only be capable of generating one. So there's no negotiation that just says, I'm generating this one because that's all I can do. I'm a tiny constrained right. device. I'm going to ship this off, right? And so the verifier just has to be prepared to do it multiple. And so that's... Yeah, so, so the, way, well, the way we've talked about that is that there still is a negotiation phase, but it, it just defaults to no negotiation. That's the pre-selected. You know, there is no no actual negotiation necessary because you're going to select only the thing that's there. So, you know, and, right. and the, the terminology that we've used, and I don't know if it makes sense, is that there's the negotiation phase, which leads to a selection, and that selection is, is may be predefined. And in some implementations or protocols, there may be no, nego no negotiation phase. If your verifier is always capable of accepting everything which would trust it, then they don't need any negotiation, right? You just have the verifier implement all of them. Right. As long yeah, as you know, at that point you need to specify in the in the format what the selection was, so you need to be able to interpret that. Um, correct. Dave, the point is that happy? the negotiation phase is not necessary. Yes. Uh, uh, I think so. What do other people think? I think it looks pretty. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I would uh, narrow like the blue. I would narrow the blue verifier box a little bit so that you can see the arrows on the left. So, right now, the line is too close to the to the <clears> arrows <throat> on the left, but uh, so, otherwise, it looks great. So it's, it turns out that a TPM can generate multiple formats, uh, and I don't know that there's a name for the specific uh, formats unless you go uh, into different versions of the <clears throat> TPM. Uh, or, or qualify it by calling it the binary format or something. Is that it? Maybe could actually FYI, call it I'm, not, I'm not certain change the diagram, but just uh, if a topic comes up, it's FYI. Well, I, think the, I think the architectural point here is, is there a negotiation phase? And if so, where does it fit into the architecture? Okay. Um, is it part of the architecture that the architecture has defined? There's a negotiation. Here's the protocol, blah, blah, blah. Well, I don't think we're going that way. Um, or it says um, it's part of the use case as a scenario that you have to describe that. Uh, or you've described no negotiation or, you know, we're going to have to have some process in, in EAT that does something or whatever. And I think that from an architectural point of view, that I think that we're we're trying to push and say there from the architectural point point of view, there's no negotiation at runtime. There may be a discussion so, uh, at I, I, scenario I would, creation I would, I would time. I would say it's up to, to the what, protocol as to whether there is one or not. Yeah, I would disagree yeah, that you're fine. saying there is not. There, there, there needs to be the possibility of one. Um, and if there's not, I mean, even in the case of no issue, there needs to be some notion of what domain of interpretation we're talking about so that um, when you express it's going to be in this format, that that format means something to both the attester and appraiser. It doesn't need to be universal, but there needs to be some way of saying that I know what they are on both sides. There's a, there's a, either the specifications define it up front and it's, it's locked down in text, or there's some discovery slash negotiation protocol. Right. Right. And, and that negotiation can be dynamic in the sense that we, there are lots of different choices or it can be predefined, um, but there, as long as it's unambiguous when you go to use it, how to interpret that format. Well, and I think it, it might be dynamic among choosing between, you know, five predefined things, potentially. That sen Possibly. Does sentence make Change you happy? Scenario to protocol. Change scenario to protocol, and then I'm happy. Yeah. And I, I think an important point, and whether you put it in the slide or not, is this idea of a domain of interpretation because uh, if there isn't one there it has to be universal so you need to be able to to define between uh, you know when I, a new use case is created to be able to say within the context of that use case um, this is what we mean when we say this um, michael second line from the bottom species should be specifies Does this does within domain of interpretation, and I know not everyone will know that DOI. So I wanted to explain. Would ask what do you mean by that? That produce, um, and tester produces a specific format within a specific domain of interpretation. 
I don't know what. That's, that's, that's a term that's in about. other IETF documents, but uh, it, it, the general idea is it says that it, it specifies what the words we're using in this communication mean, right? So uh, where I know it's there for for fact is in the discussion of uh, uh, crypto algorithms. When you say I'm going to use this crypto algorithm, I need to define what domain we're talking about for them. So ISACMP is oh, a good example where they... Yeah, so ISACMP came up with DOI and largely regarded as one of the biggest uh, mistakes we made in it um, because it, 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 it added a layer of indirection in the document that made it very hard to reason about and no one ever came up with a second DOI. So... Um, so that's why I'm, I'm fearful of the words because I feel I, it has a bad rep. I, th I think it's a, it's the... The protocol is is equivalent to the domain of interpretation. I, I don't, yeah, I like the slide the way that it is right now. If there's something that is confusing about this, I don't quite follow it yet. So that's why I like it this way, because it doesn't have any words that are confusing to me. I don't know if that's uh, different from everybody else. So. so if you're not going to allow for the specification of a demand of interpretation, you need to really ask for some sort of universal language and it needs to be um, extensible because otherwise you're locking in all future uh, no. uh, use cases. No, that's not it, what we're doing at all. Are you talking about how to identify which format it is? If so, then each protocol could in theory have its own a uh, way of identifying which format it is, whether something uses an integer you know or a which or whatever. protocol you're using then. You know what you uh, Sorry, my apologies. So I, I guess the question comes up as, do you believe that the attester and the relying party always know each other? Are they in, in the same um, administrative domain? If that's the case, then you, you have a lot more freedom to do what you're talking about. If you're going to say two strangers are going to maybe need to do an attestation, you need to, in a sense, settle on a vocabulary that you're going to use. So, um, not necessarily the same administrative domain, but they both have to trust the verifier. Okay. We are having a problem, we being in the royal sense. Um, Start with the fact that this conversation is so stratospheric that if I were in the room, I would have no clue as to what this means in terms of uh, how I implement. What is it? You know, it, it, it's so far from code that an example is not just warranted but really mandatory, and that's part of the reason why I think we can spend why people will spend so much time on this slide. You know, when we talk about, you know, anytime we see a tester uh, uh, produces a specific format, relying party demands a specific format, we're at the IETF, right? What is the format, right? What are the formats? We know how to negotiate, right? I mean, if it's an HTTP, you can use accept headers and other things like that. But we are so far from that. We, you know, there needs to be a little bit of grounding here. Sorry. <laughs> so we expect that there will be drafts written that provide the binding between the payloads, which are what this is trying to dis trying to capture. And it doesn't have to be a draft, it just has to be an example. No, it but the specific case is that that there's more than just the the the, the protocol as Ned wants to call it, and I prefer use case or scenario, but um, that there has to be a document somewhere that says how that that's going on. And I was kind of thinking I could put it in a bubble here. Um, this slide is about, uh, data, the, the, sorry, the lines on here from evidence attestation results are about the data flows, not the protocols. The protocols are on the slides that have the passport model and background check model and so on. So. You have, right. To, you have to look at those to talk about protocols. I mean, you have to look at one of the other diagrams to talk about protocols. Right. But wait, so now you're in the now you're in the, the working group meeting, right? Because this is about how you're going to present this stuff to the working group, right? You you you, you, you know you're going to get that question. Right? You know. Okay. 
you know, protester in a specific format, you know, here's specific format there. Which standards body am I in? Uh, I don't agree with the text that you put in, Michael. Uh, okay. Because but, but just focus on what what Elliot said first, because I'm trying to capture his his complaint and or oh, answer oh, it. Oh, oh. All I'm saying is you might have to do a forward reference or something to indicate that this isn't just stratospheric. Or say something like, we're going to show an example of what we mean by this a couple of slides down, but it really has to be an example. So I, really take, so I take your point as two things, Elliot. First yeah. of all, we make have to make it clear in the architecture that um, that the protocol that is going to define these formats. Um, and secondly, we have to give uh, a slide or two in the future here, an example of what that document would say. Did I get your, you right? Yeah, mostly the latter as much as the former, you know, and more so than the former, just, just a sketch to say, you know, a, a little proof point for people to see, this is how it all fits together. Right. I, I think it would be okay here too to say that this is an area where we're still dis discussing, and that you know that the, this some uh, room for for change and further definition here. I mean, because I, I think we're we're spending a lot of time discussing something which is fairly controversial. That's not really getting you toward what you need to do on Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to what Dave had complained about my bubble and whether it belongs or not, and whether we would have a slide, how it all fits together. The the, the words don't match what we talked about. So I, I understand okay. what your intent is, right? So let's say that there's a, a negotiation protocol that happens at runtime, right? Then it's not true that the document specifies which format. It specifies how to determine which format, right? And what you already say in the bottom left bullet of the, of the slide. And so... Uh, I either want it to be removed or I'd want it to be consistent with the bottom left bullet. Sure, that's better. Um, I, don't, I don't understand the for a specific use case part, but the rest I agree with. Well, I mean, if the case is uh, secure, the TEEP is a use case. Yeah, so maybe specific use change with a, a given document, a, a given use case. Yeah, because right now it sounds like a document is only going to support a specific use case, or it's going to be limited to a set of use cases and not extensible to new use cases. I'm not sure. And so that's the for a given use case or for a specific use case sounded constraining to me. That 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 Matt, that text. Let's tell me if the text is right before we tell me. If we I I know if you have any objections to it. Uh, I. We might be able to do better, but it's probably not worth doing better. So I'm okay. Okay, and I I picked attestation result rather than evidence, partly for just layout reasons, but also because I think that that's actually the more important side that needs to define between the relying party and the verifier. Um, there. Um, um, don't say that out loud. Your slide is fine. I mean, yes. don't, don't say that during yeah. the presentation, but uh, yeah, I agree. Okay, th that will generate my my flag comments of its own, which I can do now, but I would prefer not to. So just uh, I, I agree with the slide. So right, just say that that's true for both evidence and attestation results. Yeah. Okay. Would would we like to have a slide? Okay, on how this all fits together. Would we like to have a slide on the claims discussion? How much time do you have allocated? Uh, apparently, thirty minutes. But I can, I can, I would like to stop at twenty and open the mic line. Uh, I'm just saying. I'm guessing. I usually budget for two minutes per slide, and so right now you're at a twenty minute presentation or a yeah. twenty two minute presentation. If you have thirty, then we can ask go on. If you have twenty, then you need to stop. I want to have some. We're going to have mic line questions. So I would. Okay. I, 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 I'm asking. Yeah. If we were to do, would this be a slide that would be interesting to put together? And if so, I would want to hear. I I would I would need something specific to write. Our our other possibility is that one or two of these slides that were that you're asking about might be more important than one of the other ones we've already reviewed. And so I don't That's object to coming up with a slide, even if we don't get to it. Um, yep. I think you're gonna if you try to make a slide here, it's going to maybe 
cause more problems than it, it, it solves because there's going to be a lot of questions about variability and how you represent that on the one slide. And so I, until you find something like that, have that picture in your document, um, I would hold off on that. So you're saying that any 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 straw man we make up here is going to be is going to have uh, nitpicky things on it anyway. Yes, and because, so because someone everyone who looks at it is going to see what they want to see in it that doesn't fit what they have in mind. And what you're really trying to do is put one slide together that deals with a variability of lots of use cases that are extensible. And I, I think that I agree with the idea that that we need to address that. Um, but if you try to do this in a hurry to fit into a briefing on Tuesday, you may hurt the cause more than help it. So uh, when you say this, is this referring to um, Elliot's discussion of the previous slide, or is this something else? No, 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 this idea of uh, one slide that fits no, no. it all together. How this all fits together. I, my question was to Michael. When you say how this all fits together, I think oh. my, my interpretation is you added the slide in response to Elliot. Is that correct? If so, then I agree with the comments that... Um, Depending on what goes on here, it might okay. How the architecture all fits together? I don't know what would be on a slide when you do that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that slide. means either. Because I thought so, what Elliot was asking for was an example, yeah. right? Not how it all fits together, but just an example of a of a particular composition to illustrate how slide eleven connects to other slides. Yes, you don't you don't have to have every combination of of of, of possibilities here. But a couple of the ones that you're one or two that you are engineering towards, or you know, in terms of what what you know without showing all the axes of freedom here we don't have time to do more than one i have no objection to doing one as long as it would be clear that this is just an arbitrary one and it's probably not your favorite one because there's too many of to, too many favorites out there so we picked one of them and it's probably not your favorite let me tell you why more yeah. than one is a good idea right which is you're spending a lot of time to accommodate a lot of cases i would pick two that are disparate just to show how you know how the architecture is intended to accommodate the, you know this and a great many others so uh, i agree with you I, agree yeah. the budget. I, I, I think that that's the point you really need to make that there is a potential great many extensible set of these and even promise that the architecture document will go into to um adding those examples right and and, and by doing so you will also show the group that you are ground, you are well grounded in terms of requirements, and what and, and that you're making you're making good progress towards those requirements. I agree with you, I Elliot. I, I wonder, I wonder if there are two people that have uh, a lot invested in a specific uh, protocol, as Ned calls them, that would be willing to detail this for me because I'll get it. I'll, I'll say something stupid and confuse you. I think the, the danger is not putting in too much detail while still being able to talk about how to apply the architecture and fit the other things together. Um, Is Teep one of those examples? Um, if you don't use the word, well, OTRP. I'm thinking, I think it is a yes without necessarily having to tie it to Teep. I think uh, you could generalize it slightly or you could use specifically Teep. Um, because the point is to tie it, you have to tie it specifically to either background check or passport or something else. And for simplicity, I would tie it to something that is just background check or something that's just passport model. Uh, Teep combines the two. So that's why I think we can get yes. simpler than that. Okay. And still be, Cause it's just an example, right? I would yeah. pick one example that should pick say uh, a passport with, I'm just gonna make something up here, right? Cause you could either have negotiation or no negotiation. So I might pick, I'm gonna arbitrarily pick out of the matrix. Um, Passport with negotiation, and then a background example with no negotiation. Fine. And just say, yep, these are just two arbitrary examples. There's many different combinations, and this is just to show that uh, that we picked two very different examples that that's how they fit together. Well, I'm not. I don't think I agree. I don't think I'm going to get this done for Tuesday because I don't know what to pick right now. Um, if, but if I think we should get it do, done. If you think you want to spend the budget on these slides, I can send you two slides. Uh, just what I just told you. If people like that idea, I can prepare simple diagrams. I'm not sure I will be able to match. But uh, but I I think to Elliot's point is that 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 it's not just it's not just uh this is the 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 a general idea, but 
This is a very specific case. Michael, Am I right, Elliot? Uh, yeah, it's just to just just to show that you know, okay, he, we've added this we've added these components, you know, into the architecture. You can see how the architecture is laid out, right? Now, here's sort of a real way you would put this stuff together. One example: real. emphasis on real, real, right? And then, and you say, you know, here's here's how, and because that will help people relate to the componentry that they have to build. In this, and that they and, and understand what they, you know, how they can use this. It won't seem foreign to them, in other words. Okay, so I just want to jump to are we going to add this claim discussion slide? Um, I'm guessing you don't have the time budget, so I think that should be done on the list, is what I'm concluding. So, uh, Dave, if you want to do this, but I think that I, I really want, I, I really think that it needs to really be definite, like a really specific case. So I was actually thinking that someone else from, uh, someone else who had a more, uh, uh, Dave, you're just too much of a generalist. Right? Um, <laughs> I, I can do the T1 if you want, since that's the, the well, I only, thought the T1 the only might be a customer. really good one. The, the T1 might figure... be a really good choice that because it does, it's very relatable uh, right now. But we've also said it several times, but maybe, you know, you want to, I can pull that out of your slides already anyway. Um, you. So got Guy Federico has a, the RIV draft, which uh, maybe is uh, what we're trying to fits here. And, and Eric Boyd had, had, had also a different kind of suggestion. So are those, are those, are those examples illustrating what we're trying to accomplish here? I don't know if there's already a diagram that doesn't have uh, detail not necessary to this discussion. If so, then maybe. All right, I'll look at the RIV draft and uh, the, I uh, haven't looked at the the uh, Roto routing stuff document very well. Um, uh, I was, yeah, I also have to go another call. Um, um, are we going to? Are, are are there objections to the the slides the one to eleven as they are at this point? No. Okay. Wonderful. Um, I was going to ask. This is for one of the presentations. We had a bunch of discussion and lists and things about the timing stuff. Um, I gather we're not going to have a chance to talk about that before the actual meeting, and so we might be in our internal disagreements during the actual meeting. That might be the best we can do. The timing? Yeah, I came up oh. with some slides. Sorry, this is Eric. I just joined. Um, Dave and I have had some discussions, um, and there are one or two times that which might or might not be needed for everyone. I don't think they're oh, bad. The timing, it's just a question the timing discussion, yes. There's a, separate time, there's a separate time slot that's not Michael's time slot, right? And yeah. there's slides. Yeah. If, uh, uh, if there's any slides to be presented in that one, I didn't know if we were going to have a chance to review the slides. So I'm sorry, we took all the time up on this. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, Eric wasn't had joined us. I have to go another call. Sorry. Okay. Uh, and, and since you're hosting, that's going to end the meeting. No, I can assign it to somebody. There we go. It's signed to you. Huh. <laughs> Um, so right now, whose name is on the timing discussion slot, uh, presentation? I forget. It's not me. It's me. It's you, Eric. Do you have, uh, slides you want to share? Yes. And, uh, let me see if I can bring them up, make sure it's the right version. Let me go ahead and share. All right. Uh, as you can see the slide, what I have right here is a what I think intersected what Dave and I had talked about in thread and during a brief call on potential times of interest um, uh, as events, at times of particular events or specific events that occurred. Um, what you see in purple are ones that um, 
one or the other of us think it's important. Ones in, they're in white, we, we both think are important. And the open questions for people on the call, what I'm hoping to get answers for from people during the interim is who wants the additional times which are identified in purple. Uh, there are people, and I guess Michael just jumped so we can't talk about it, who I think who had talked about a tester awareness as a difference in when a value was generated but, and the, the claim, for example, of when you would actually have a, uh, uh, an awareness of a particular value on a tester being a time that might be interesting. And so I put that in based on, on Michael's feedback. Um, but before I go into specifics on times, does the context of this slide where there are different events that might be of interest and that we're trying to put into the architecture document a subset of those events that uh, might be repeated across multiple documents with individual documents being add, able to add new definitions of time should they should they need to um, do so so here's so the 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 the, the the ones that are in the purplish color are those not in the current architecture spec and we're discussing whether to put them in or what do you mean? none of these are in the current architecture spec there's no such table in the architecture spec there's a pull request that i generated which matches the dave column uh, right the pull, so the pull request is what i meant yeah the pull request is the dave column although it uses the uh, not the letters that are in the dave column it uses the letters roughly if it's in the merged column Okay, so with the exception of C, that that's the case. Okay, don't use those letters. Use the letters on the left because there's two C's. Uh, okay, N R question mark. N R is in the pull request, with an explanation of why that one is important for security purposes. Okay. Um, the A A H D A R P R R. And, uh, yeah, are the ones that are not in the pull request because I uh, removed them because I didn't have any text that actually relied on them. And so I said, if there's no security check that somebody was going to do that used that event, then the event was not interesting in the security uh, part. And so there's all kinds of events, like when was the IP header added? When was uh, 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 claim A done versus claim B? When did you add that? There's all kinds of other events. The only ones that are interesting in the table are things that are used in some actual check for, say, freshness at some point. So is the goal of this uh, meeting right now to come up with that text to disposition them or something else? The goal was to see who else had events that they thought were interesting uh, above what had been placed into the poll request. My initial attempt at timings included timings that heard on this call, but uh, perhaps people who are on this call can defend them. A good example would be HD, which could be interesting to Hank because of TUDA and the possibility of having some uh, central nonce distribution time uh, was something that was interesting. And the question of do we put that in a base architecture document or not is something that's worth uh, going here. Additionally, the attester awareness was something that I thought Michael had uh, initially asserted as different than value generation. And so the goal here was to see which one of these uh, times are times that um, people wanted to assert go into the pull request. Um, so the NR, which is, uh, uh, what's it called? Since that one uses a different label in the pull request. So I have uh, VN and VR instead of NS and NR. And there I have specific uh, security equations as to why uh, what's on the slide here, NR is different from NS because it's used by a different party and it's used in a different check. But they're both required and I have the text that walks through that in a specific example. And so um, my assertion to you guys to uh, verify is that uh, that line is uh, required and the pull request explains why. Um, and I would also assert that um, until somebody else generates text that uh, uses one of them in an equation, the other ones are not. That one's a weak assertion because I can't prove the negative, right? It's a request for somebody else to prove the positive, and I will accept any of the other four if and only if somebody has a text with an equation that actually uses that value in some security check. Uh, 
And so I think it's up to the working group to say which of these times they have to uh, either add text for or not add text for. And I have no problem with that. The weakest one on the list, I think, is RP. Uh, RP for results push. It's possible to generate results and push them several times because you might send them to different um, different places. So that might or might not be needed. The results relayed, uh, that is an interesting one uh, where uh, if you create a set of information which goes uh, from a background check to verifier and then relay the results somewhere else, is that something that is interesting? So I think that it's up to the discussion on Tuesday to start highlighting which ones of these are times that people want to champion. Um, so I'm going to propose a couple of changes to this slide here. The uh, letters in the Eric and Dave column, I don't think are interesting anymore because those referred to pieces of emails that the working group hasn't necessarily uh, uh, memorized. And so I would delete the Eric and Dave columns. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. Um, um, I don't think there should my, the, my personal uh, opinion bias here. Um, I don't think in our question mark should be a question anymore because that there has been a case uh, explained in pull request text, unlike the other ones. So I think it should be either white or in no question mark or color coded differently from the purple ones for which that's not the case. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I think Nantz relayed, uh, and we might have to have a dialogue about it. I think that Nantz relayed is, is a possible time, I, I can think of use case for it. I can think of use cases for the others. So, so I. My, my point is whether you can think of it or not is not the point of the color coding. The color coding is whether text has been generated for review. And text has been generated for review with a diagram and explanation for the NR, but not for the other four. And that's why I said it's a different color coding because one is out for review and the other ones are, we don't know if there is a case. Uh, are others okay with making it uh, the color coding text out for review rather than, um, let's say, agreed? Uh, that that would be fine with me if we understand that there's text out for review with the colors. That makes sense to me. All right. Other thoughts? What, what What's the goal in terms of the conversation with the with the mic. Well, I'm hoping that we can find out what people want to generate as interesting times. Um, you know, the question of what times do people want to drive for what use cases? So I think essential. I, 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 I'm concerned there's not enough context for each of these for somebody to reason about them. I, I agree. Yep, I agree. This is a new discussion. Because that this only make th this whole slide only makes sense if there's a slide before it or something that defines the concepts that are sort of in section nine right now, which is particularly um, what are the security checks you want to do, right? You want to know whether certain things are fresh. You want to know if your attestation result is fresh, or you want to know if your evidence is fresh. If you want to know if a particular value is fresh, you have to have that as context uh, first to say what are the types of security checks you want to do, right? What threat, what's the threat you're trying to mitigate? Then after that, then you could say what events are necessary because how would I do that check? Well, I would need such and such information to do that. And here's the information you need. So can we look at slides three and four? Just All right. that sense for what you're talking about. Slide three is um, a showing of where these events would sit amongst a background check model. And in this case, I uh, did draft Fedorco. Um, from the original email and just updated with the the new times and actually removed some times off and put some text around what is happening at, at the different points. So, um, obviously, I don't have any problem with this particular slide. I think it is um, not sufficient to answer the question, but there's nothing wrong. It's just not complete, right? Because in order to be complete, then you'd have to say, what's the security check that is being done to verify uh, freshness here? Um, and so that's not that's what's not obvious on the slide here is how does the, how are these times used? 
So, for example, <clears throat> at the relying party, right? If you, I, I, I'm going to put something here. I don't remember if this matches what's in the text that I wrote, but you get the point. It says the relying party checks that uh, time er minus time ns is less than a threshold. For example. Yeah, that's missing. Right. And I'm saying it's that, that's the text of the document. The question of of how much do we reflect here in the slide? Yeah, you know, it's it's an open question. How, how much can time, be added? How much time do you have for this presentation? What's the time budget? It wasn't much. It was like uh, was it five minutes? I can't remember. Five minutes. Yeah, if it's five minutes, that means you don't have time for any discussion whatsoever. Exactly. It's uh, introducing the comments and the concepts. You gotta, have, you gotta have ten minutes before you can actually open the mic wide. Exactly. So um, I would so my, I, so I would suggest that you take slide two and make a copy of it. Remove the lines that are marked purple, and and show that first, just as a, as sort of like um, you know here, here here's a set of here's a set of you know oh, um, values that we're discussing. Then uh, put the put the slide that has the the purple values after slide four, <clears throat> and then we we can just say that hey, there's some other ones. There's some other possible ones that we're considering, and uh, we need you know use cases to motivate them. And so, but but so I, I, th I think it's the case that slides three and four aren't using any of the values that are per marked purple currently. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so that's my suggestion. That would give you uh, one more slide, and but you don't have time to talk about it anyway. So it's just going to be a. You know, you know, this is what we've done so far, and we're still talking about it. I think message. that's very fair. I think that, especially because there's people on this call who have suggested other times, I don't want to go ahead and not show them because they've been raised as interesting ones. So, listing the ones that are in the pull request and listing the ones that are potential, I think, are interesting. And I can put NR to say this is in the pull request, but I'm not comfortable with not showing what other people on this call had discussed. Well, by the way, I agree with you that result push is the least interesting one in the entire slide, yep. um, because that's I consider that to be a transport event, right? And so, for example, there's evidence generation, e.g., but there's not evidence pushed, right, which would be the transport event, right, or the conveyance event, right? That That's not particularly interesting for security purposes when the lower layer does something. I can come up with use cases that do, but again, if I'll, I'll be up to people to try to defend that, and uh, and I can think of them, but it's up to people to want to defend them. But that the from, in terms of this the slides and what we want to talk about, that conversation isn't going to be resolved during the, the presentation. Exactly. Of the slides. Exactly. Right. That's why I like your proposal is that we are going to go ahead and say, here are the ones that are there, and here are the conversations that somebody else is going to have to champion if you want a different time. And that could be the uh, result of the five minutes, just saying, here's where we are, here's what's in the poll, here's two examples, here are discussions that you are going to have to champion if you want them in. And that's that's perfect for me. Okay. So that's it. Thanks, Eric. Is there more? Talk about? Uh, I don't think so. If I understand right, Michael has 20 minutes, or well, 20 to 30 minutes, depending, and uh, Eric has five minutes. Are we planning to have another revision three of the architecture draft? So, okay. um, you, you're asking whether this somebody is going to be posted in their draft. Um, since didn't talk about that before. My assumption is no, we're just going to go with what's there, even if the editor's copy is different, right? We may have other pull requests to get merged because that could happen at any time, but okay. I think that we made another internet draft. Are you okay with that? Okay I'm with okay that? with it. Okay. Uh, but we, we, it would be good if we could do a uh, another turn of it uh, before too long. So Eric's also got five minutes for trusted path routing, right? The yes. same meeting? Yes, we only really talked about that at the, um, 
uh, virtual uh, interim. And so going a little bit deeper into some of the questions that people have asked since is what I'm trying to do with the full, full group. So I'm, I'll pretty much use this, a lot of the slides uh, that were last, last go around. Okay. All right. Well, uh, does anybody else have anything else before we close this architecture call then? Well, thank you for staying an extra 18 minutes. So thanks. Have yeah. a good day, everybody. Bye.